Hello! So, um, welcome to the next short video on creating worlds, world building. Um, I figured Cyberpunk's very in vogue this summer, with Cyberpunk 2077 coming out uh, next year. So I figured I'd jump on and do a little bit of a, an introduction to Cyberpunk, since I'm writing a Cyberpunk setting right now. Uh, at least uh, a Cyberpunk uh, setting that has a lot of Cyberpunk influence in it. So I thought I'd do a video on what it is, and what is it, and how would you make it work. There are a few different ways we, we can approach it, and there are a few tropes that I'd like people to avoid when they're when they're doing it for their own uh, for their own settings and things like that. So generally, uh, it's going to be a nice short video, uh, just detailing the do's and don'ts of Cyberpunk, essentially. So, All right, first of all. You got to talk about what is cyberpunk, okay? Cyberpunk does not have to be near the present day. Okay? So you see quite a lot of cyberpunk settings that are um, around about, you know, uh, the, the, the next hundred years. Essentially, a lot of cyberpunk fiction is based in the next hundred years, um, rather than being in a, in a far future or, or the past. The past would be, would be a really interesting way to do it. Uh, but no, most cyberpunk is is in the future, uh, maybe the twenty one hundreds. Um, uh, in the decade, you know, the 2000s up until 2100 is normally the timeline. At a push, it goes to 2200 maybe, uh, but mainly stays in around around our own timeline. It normally uh, sits in the danger zone of being close to our current time. The danger zone means um, you need to make allowances to, to what's actually happened in our world right now. Uh, generally, the closer you get to the modern timeline of Earth, our Earth, the less uh, creative wiggle room you have to start changing things around and start making things very fantastical. Um, you can simply get around that by saying, you know, our, it's not our Earth, it's, a, it's another Earth, you know, a, 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 a um, hypothetical Earth, you know, that, that, that where, where technology's gone in a different direction. Um, Fallout does that, even though Fallout is a post-apocalyptic um, setting. Fallout does that quite a lot. It says that the, comp the computer chip was never invented so you know technology goes down a completely different path so obviously it's an alternate timeline alternate world which is fine uh, but normally cyberpunk is in the, the famous cyberpunk sits in that danger zone of being close to our current time um, it is metamorphic in setting so it's able to shift and change ideas thrust onto it cyberpunk is meant to be a canvas it's meant to be a backdrop it's not meant to be the, the leading star of, of, of anything that, that you, you put into it. Um, cyberpunk is flavoring. Cyberpunk is uh, keeping things keeping things moving, you know, uh, keeping things in the background. So, so you've got, um, say, in Shadowrun, you've got things like dragons, you've got things like um, you know, corporations and magic and all different kinds of things like that all thrown together. That's not the interesting part. The interesting part are the Shadowrunners. That's why it's called Shadowrun. Yeah, the in interesting part of Blade Runners are the Blade Runners, rather than, you know, you know it's Deckard and people like that. Uh, they're the interesting people. Um, if if there was, a, if I wanted a theoretical thesis on uh, cultural cultural ties to technology or you know pyramids run by corporations, then I would go and watch a documentary or I would read a textbook. I don't want to be reading it in my fiction. Um, in general, make sure that your setting is your setting. That's all it is. That's all it needs to be. And Cyberpunk, I would say, is the best canvas at, at, at melding with other settings. So you can throw fantasy in there, like Shadowrun does, with orcs and goblins and stuff. Uh, you can throw um, you know, mythological stuff in there. That, that would work just as well. Um, you could throw uh, grim dark things in there that would work just as well. It's just an absolutely fantastic mel melting pot. Yep, cyberpunk is is the pot which we throw all your ingredients into to stir up. Um, normally, cyberpunk is 80s neon, isn't it? It's all you know, big lights and uh, yeah, a future gone bad. So it's all it's big lights, but just under the surface, it's very grimy, it's very gritty. Yeah, think truckers in space kind of a thing. Um, corporations control the planet or much of the setting. And that gives way to rebellious spirits of the 70s and 80s, things like that. So think youth, think punk. That's why it's called cyberpunk, not cyber. A little bit of an angry person. It's cyberpunk, yeah? Um, so it's all about the, the young rebelling against the old, the new rebelling against the old. 
um, you know, in terms of technology gone bad, it basically means um, the things that we rely on right now, as in technology and capitalism, that they've gone, they're out of control. They've gone completely mad and have turned the world into, into a, a raging cesspool, which is why you don't really see cyberpunk. It's very much a, cha a Japanese slash, you know, American Western way of thinking. Um, cyberpunk is it, it's one of those settings, and Chinese and uh, Japanese cyberpunk is very very different to Western cyberpunk. Um, Japanese cyberpunk goes more towards the technology side, as in Ghost in the Shell things like that, where technology has gone completely insane, and you have like you know you know you have people who are basically immortal or they can they can be dialed up into different bodies things like that more out there technological things, whereas the Western cyberpunk tends to be very much in terms of capitalism, uh, corporations, consumerism gone completely run amok, and all of our you know, economies and, and safety safety nets breaking down. Um, you can do either of those two, or a combination of those two, or you can make up your own. There's nothing stopping you from making a cyberpunk setting because all oils run out, or because um, we've come into contact with an alien species, or something like that. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. Um, I'm just I'm just giving you the rundown of what cyberpunk normally consists of. Why does it work? Why does it work so well? Why do people keep coming back to it? Yeah. Cyberpunk, the main thing I think, is it's, uh, the first well all three of these things, but the, but the first two definitely. Cyberpunk allows us to explore themes important to us in a more direct way than fantasy or sci-fi. It's more grounded. It means more. So, it's very hard to, it's very easy to explore themes of racism, to explore themes of, um, you know, the the extreme right and the extreme left causing problems for everybody, um, you know, with, with global capitalism and things like that. It's very easy to explore those themes in a cyberpunk setting because, again, even though it's very close to our timeline and that makes things difficult, it's close, it's far enough away that we can start to explore some of these themes and really get under the skin of all these really complex issues that are taking place in our society today. It would be much harder to do, to do that in Middle Earth. But you try doing that in Lord of the Rings and see how far you get, yeah? Um, even in things like A Song of Ice and Fire, it sort of rings hollow. Yeah? Um, and, you, and, you know, trying to go into A Song of Ice and Fire and saying, okay, you know, let's explore racism. Well, it doesn't really work. It doesn't really work. Because nearly everything that you can say about racism and sexism and things like that that happens in 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 a medieval fantasy setting you can sort of understand you're like yeah i mean i can see why it's that way because all the men are fighting and things like that you know whereas in cyberpunk there really isn't that excuse so it's a much more charged atmosphere to go in and start talking about these different issues because it's so close to the modern day and uh, sci-fi normally um sci-fi does work with cyberpunk very well unless it's actual sci sci-fi unless you're way out in the future which most sci-fi actually is. It's in the next, you know, 2600 onwards, you know. Um, doesn't really gel then because then you're looking at the galactic market and you're looking at, you know, racism could be there, but you would think it, it's a really difficult thing for humans to get their head around the fact that people who are so enlightened, who are out there going through space, still worry about things like racism and capitalism and, you know, di different, different segregations in society. You think that would all go away by then, so it's a really hard mental block to break down, which is why cyberpunk is that perfect bridge between the two. Um, we can explore where our society could be in a few decades rather than a few thousand years. So um, that essentially means what I've just said. It, it, it means that we can just see over the next hill. We can just see over the next couple of decades what's going to happen. You know, where's our world going to go? What are our grandchildren going to be putting up with? What are they going to be doing? How are they going to be going about themselves in the world? Are, are, are we? Is cyberpunk a, a pessimistic setting? I would say it is. It's very pessimistic. You know, um, that's why it's called cyberpunk and not cyber. Everyone has a nice time. It's it's very bleak, but the hope of the hope of things like cyberpunk and grim dark settings, things like that. The hope should come from the writing, not from the setting. The setting should be the foil, the background, whereas the actual hope and the, the humour and the love comes into it through your writing, through the story that you're telling. Um, whereas whereas sci-fi normally takes place, you know, a couple of hundred, maybe even thousands of years into the future, 
uh, where it's very hard to relate to what's going on because we've never been in a spaceship. You, you yourself have never been in a spaceship and you've never travelled to a distant galaxy or anything like that. But you have gone to the shop probably, gone to the store and not had very much money in your bank account and thought, oh my god, if only there was a way that I could just have fun and you know, meet friends and earn some money and, and stick it to the man a little bit. You know, every single one of you has paid tax. You've all paid taxes. Yeah, you've all paid a lot of taxes where sometimes you don't think it's fair. Maybe you're paying child support. Maybe you're paying, you know, all these different different bills that you wish you didn't have to put up with. Well, in Cyberpunk, you can stick it to the man. You can say, well, well, sod you. You're not getting any of my money. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to run the shadows. I'm going to sell some stuff in the black market. I'll get my money that way. And maybe you'll get some money. Or maybe I'll even work for you if, if, I'm, if I'm skilled enough. And I can, you know, put some money away and, and build a life for myself. Cyberpunk isn't the isn't setting about barriers. It's about breaking them down. And when I say that, I don't mean some sort of random far-left uh, talk. What I mean is that, is that Cyberpunk is all about the world saying that you can't do something and the rebellion of you doing it anyway. That's Cyberpunk. Um, Cyberpunk's easy to relate to, as I've just gone over. Think of all the bad things you know about our society and turn them up to 11. You know, capitalism. You know, rampant capitalism or rampant communism, anything. The extremes on both sides. Yeah, right wing, left wing, extremes. It's very political, cyberpunk. Um, it's very philosophical. So think about all of all about the old things that you hate in the world that you should be in your setting and you should turn them up to 11. Let's make it work for you, shall we? So, number one. Cyberpunk is never the star of the show. Your characters are the star of the show. It's very, very, very important to take that on board. Cyberpunk is a canvas. It's not like Middle Earth. It's not like Dragon Age. It's not like Star Wars, where the setting is 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 you know gives you the main sort of you know come back and watch. You, 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 I'm, I will argue this point with anyone. You don't really watch Star Wars, especially the new movies, to, to for the story. You watch it to go back to Star Wars. Yeah, that's not how it works with Cyberpunk. And that's not how it should work with Cyberpunk. You don't come back to Cyberpunk just to be in Cyberpunk. You come back to Cyberpunk because of the really cool characters that are that are a product of the world. So all the characters in the cyberpunk setting should be there because the world made them that way. Yeah? And the world is the perfect backdrop to see all these bits of drama play out. Um, use cyberpunk as a background in which to start grounding your fiction. Cyberpunk is a touchstone rather than an, uh, an entire tapestry like Middle Earth, like I've just said. Um, that word touchstone, that's what cyberpunk is. It's a style. It's a flavour. Rather than here is Middle Earth. Let me tell you about the nine thousand pounds, nine thousand pages of appendices and things like that that I've got written for it, and all these different languages that I've written. You can go that far into cyberpunk, but there's no need. Cyberpunk isn't meant to be that extensive as a setting. You should. Uh, cyberpunk is the epitome of the rule of cool. If it's cool, put it in. If it's not, don't describe it that in that much detail. I don't need to know about the Senate. I don't need to know about what's going on in, in political Congress unless it has a really big impact on the setting itself. Just tell me the cool stuff, tell me where I can plug my data jack into my head, and tell me where I can go and pick up a good coffee at 5 in the morning. That's all I want to know about my cyberpunk. Number 3. Cyberpunk bends and breaks at your will. Inject new things to avoid old tropes. Think about Shadrun and other novel ideas. So, just because cyberpunk is a backdrop setting, that doesn't mean it should be bland. It doesn't mean it should be Blade Runner 2.0. Okay? Um, Cyberpunk has been around for a while and a lot of its tropes have been done to death. So make it bend, make it break. You know, throw some things in there that aren't in there normally. Like Shadowrun, for instance, does magic and does like elves and dwarves and things like that. That you would never normally see in Cyberpunk. Throws them in there. And and tells you how they got there in the first place. It's a really novel idea, and it's one that's why it's one of my favourite settings. So inject that into your own work, yeah? Yeah, yeah, have a cyberpunk tapestry, but start making it your own. Break it throw bits of it out. It's called cyberpunk. It's about rebellion. Use it. Do whatever you want. Take corporations and make corporations the downtrodden. That'd be really interesting. Imagine corporations are the good guys. Yeah? And everyone else are the bad guys. Yeah, it's just things that just switch it up. Do whatever you want to do. Um, do not ever think that because you are cyberpunk you have to have you have to have um, corporations that are on top of everybody and you have to have trench coats and you have to have struggle and you have to have you know, just do what you want to do. But, as I just said, struggle. Don't forget it. 
Everyone in Cyberpunk is struggling for something. And good and evil is never, ever black and white. That is a huge no-no in Cyberpunk. You know, corporations, in, in, in my settings, corporations, if they're there, they exist for good reasons. They're not just there to go, ha-ha, da- keep, we're the man, keep the people down. They do that because they think it's the good, it's the best thing to do. They, they think they're doing the right thing. They think they're saving people from themselves. That's why there are corporations, yeah? Um, corporations don't just exist because they're evil. Corporations aren't evil. The people who run corporations sometimes make evil decisions. That's why it's black and white. And there are good people working for corporations. Um, but don't forget the struggle. Everyone in Cyberpunk is struggling. Yeah? Um, if you have a setting in which no one is struggling, that's now pretty much a sci- uh, science fantasy setting or sci- science fiction setting. What you want is struggle. What you want is people trying to make ends meet. What you want is people trying to overcome adversity. What you want is people striving against, ri- rising against, raging against. Yeah? That's what you want. It's rebellion. Things to avoid. Constant downtrodden. Now, why, have, why, why am I saying that after I've just said that people you know, should be struggling? Well... There needs to be a reason corporations are in charge, if they even are, yeah? And there's nothing wrong with having people who are downtrodden, but there needs to be a reason for that. There needs to be a, a real reason for them to be downtrodden. And that is not, corporation is evil, boo, 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 corporation is evil. Corporations give jobs to a lot of people, and they give people a lot of job security, and they make sure that people have really good products, and they make sure, basically corporations make sure that the world goes around, they do good things, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean they're saints, Um, Corporations, as a rule, can be very corrupt, they can be very bureaucratic, they can be very uncaring. Cyberpunk leans into that second part of that, but that doesn't mean the first part doesn't exist, yeah? And if people are struggling, if they are struggling and you can't forget the struggle, there needs to be a reason why they're struggling, not just, this is cyberpunk, all the corporations are evil. Uh, Number two, near future has been done to death. Blade Runner, Shadowrun, Altered Carbon, and even Mr. Robot, which is a... I say is a cyberpunk um, origin story, are all set very near or at the present day. Explore! There's a lot of time out there. There's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, what if What if there was a technological advancement in the 80s, so all of a sudden the 80s become, um, you know, really, uh, really laden with cyberpunk? You know, what if, what, if becomes, what if things become really futuristic really early on? There's nothing to say that it won't, okay? Um, so that's what you should be looking at, is making it, making it a bit different. I'm sick of seeing cyberpunk uh, settings that are set, you know, in the 2100s. Let's do something different. Do the 70s. Do the 60s. Do the 40s. That'd be really interesting. You might imagine, like, throwing in, like, like uh, World War Two or World War One, you know, style combat and, and having cyberpunk stuff in there. How cool would that be? Explore. Yeah? Throw different things into your cyberpunk. Number three. Avoid hacking tropes. Make them stand out. Everybody hacks in, in in Cyberpunk. Everyone does it. Oh, it's annoying. Like, everyone does it. It's just, oh, yeah, yeah, let's plug this into my head. Shadowrun has the matrix and decking. How do your societies use the in- internet or whatever, or whatever uh, network you actually have? Well, make sure you make it novel. Yeah, in, in my setting, for instance, there's a thing called Jackers. And they have a third eye implant in their head that allows them to plug into the to the undernet, which is the basically the our version of the internet, and start downloading their, their consciousness you know, consciousness into into the actual undernet. And they can they can use it as a physical plane. They can they can walk around it with their minds and things like that. Um, you know, that, that that's what it is for me. That, that's what that's what the undernet is um, in my current setting. So how would you make it yourself? How how would you push it to to be different? Um, like the cyberpunk setting I'm doing at the moment, is is a is an infernal cyberpunk setting. So think Doom. Um, so you know, uh, sometime in the 1970s, or 1900s, sorry, you know, a lot of um, demons came into the world, and we were fighting them for for years and years and years and years. That's what it is. That that that's what our setting is. It, it, and and now in the 1980s, now cyberpunk has started. You know. Um, but that's that's the main that's the main difference there. You know, there's hell, there's portals to hell, there's demons, there's devils, there's all sorts, dragons, all sorts coming out at us, and uh, the world is like basically destroyed apart from several mega mega cities, mega sprawls. 
Um, that's another trope of cyberpunk is that the, that the cities are normally huge cities. Um, you know, the urbanization is, is a huge deal in cyberpunk. It needs to be there. Um, so make, as I said, make your own setting a little bit different. Stick away from tropes. Stick away from these age-old, you know, uh, Shadowrun, The Matrix, um, Altered Carbon, Blade Runner, things like that. Stay away from all that. Do your own thing. Use Cyberpunk as a backdrop rather than a rather than a crutch. Yeah. Remember, last thing, punk. It's called Cyberpunk for a reason. Use rebellion and use free thinking. That's Cyberpunk. That's all I've got to say about that. So, hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Um. These are things that should be included in new cyberpunk settings. I'm, I'm thinking that you should already have a bit of a grounding in cyberpunk before you come to me. Um, but in general, that's what cyberpunk is. That's what cyberpunk is. It's rebellion. But in doing that, rebel against the tropes. Rebel yourself as a writer. Go against the tropes. Don't don't be doing what Blade Runner did. Yeah, watch it for inspiration, sure, but take it and mould it and break it and think, hmm, what can I do? What can I inject here? What do I find cool? I like Gundams. Okay, I'm going to throw big-ass Gundam mechs all over the place. I like Warhammer 40,000. Okay, cool. I'm going to have like a sort of a Space Marine kind of kind of people in there. I like uh, I like Doom. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to throw the devil in there. The devil's going to be in Cyberpunk. I like uh, I like Vampire the Masquerade. Let's throw some vampires in there. Then you know, let's have vampire Cyberpunk vampires running around. Do something to make yourself stand out. Because there's something that's totally unique, Cyberpunk is becoming very one note. This is the perfect time to write a cyberpunk story. With the way the world's going at the moment, it's the perfect time to write a cyberpunk story. But do it in your own voice. Use the confidence that you've taken from our previous sessions and do it in your own voice. Because it's worth hearing. It really is worth hearing. I'll speak to you guys next time.